Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. And we want to thank you guys for your support over on Patreon. We couldn't do it without you guys. We have Vietnam Artie over on Patreon as our newest uh, member. Thank you for your support and being with us on this fun journey. Thank you so much, Vietnam Artie. Thank you. Yes. And, you know, again, guys, everything goes up over on Patreon in one spot with no commercials. So I was thinking about the great divide that's going on as more and more people are struggling and life, just basic things in life are getting to be overwhelming to try to cover for the vast majority of people when we're talking about finances and just making the bills. So how much Americans typically make in 2023 well zero to twenty thousand twenty three percent of of this was the respondents to a survey twenty three percent of people out there don't make twenty thousand dollars now you know i'll sh i'll share with you guys my my parents you know uh, many would view them in this world as not trying to better themselves in some ways and that they didn't really seem to value money much. Neither of my parents ever made more than $20,000. Neither of them. And we did live paycheck to paycheck all the time. And yet there's felt to be an abundance. I, I never felt like I was lacking at, at all. Again, it's about perception in so many ways and what we do value. And what we do value, I, I want to get that point across here as we go deeper into this video, because this is going to be an eye opener, I think, for, for many. And, and a lot of you guys will go, yeah, I figured. 20,000 to 40,000, 24 percent. So basically, you're talking 47 percent under 40,000, 40 to 60,000, 20 percent. And then 60,000, 80,000, 10 percent. 80,000 to 100,000, 7.6%. 100 to 200,000, 11.6%. And 200,000 dollars or more, 2.47%. You know, when you look at what the members of Congress makes, for instance, it, it does push them up into that upper echelon just just with what they you know, get salary wise, let alone perk wise. But we're going to look at something other than politics. We're going to look at the thing that might even be more touchy religion. <laughs> Matthew 1924. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. That is a big, big statement. <clears throat> And I will see comments where people will talk about uh, what one pastor or another pastor has written. Well, I, I, you know, I've, I've, I followed this person and that person. Have you ever wondered what they are worth? This is the insane world of mega rich pastors. And, you know, this goes through a few of them. And I, I, I won't roll this so we don't get blocked per se, but I'll give you the link. It's 24 minutes. Some of these people live lives of just extreme luxury, preaching, quote unquote, the word of God. And the guides, when I came up with the idea to do a video on this, and, and this could even be a series of videos, the guides were like, take your time. Do your research. You're going to discover a lot. As you see here, you probably will recognize this guy. I, I remember his dad. You know, there is an awful lot of money in getting people into the pulpit. Mm -hmm. There really, really is. And yeah, they live pretty well, pretty extravagant lives. Church tax exemption costs the USA is one way of looking at it. Wow, $71 billion? You know, we've gone through so many small towns in the USA. <clears throat> I've gone coast to coast across the Bible Belt. All the way, I've been everywhere in the Bible Belt. And a lot of times we'll find, you know, a little town that has a blinking light, kind of like the one we're, we're in. 
Uh, we don't even read a blinking light. But we got churches all over the place. And, you know, yet <laughs> there's more. If Sometimes it seems there's more churches than there is people. But there's a reason for this. Because, again, that tax exemption. And then we see that big corporations and, and political people that are, quote unquote, ultra rich, not paying taxes. The system is made by rich people for rich people. And that's just the reality of it. As again, you see Joel Olstein here. Um, wow, I saw some really uh, vehement postings of this. I know Charles Stanley comes to mind because... Back in the day when I was a teenager, you know, I would listen to him uh, from time to time. And he uh, pa passed away at 90, uh, not too long ago. And he was seriously very influential. He, he wrote many books again. And it was interesting to see at the time of his passing, his net worth was 1.5 million. So, you know, compared to some, that's not huge, but... Compared to the average person, 1.5 million is ultra rich. It really is. And and now, of course, you know, if we are living in Hawaii, you might not think so. If you're in Connecticut and Fairfield County, where I grew up, uh, you might not think 1.5 million is a ton of money. But when we look at the stats of the average person, it's a ton of money. It is a ton of money. And so he had in touch ministries. He wrote so many. Uh, books and everything, and as you see, you know, tributes to him. He went to heaven today. You know, um, it's interesting to see it. Chuck Swindoll is another one that comes to mind. You know, these gentlemen uh, both were around when I was growing up, so I would listen to them. I had books but written by both of them. You know, I went down that, that path in exploration, but somehow it always felt like this is totally missing the mark to me. It, it never resonated with me, never. But I tried, you know, I mean, I tried. I, I went to multiple Bible studies every single week. And the deeper I went, the more I realized that the average person didn't have a clue of what was in the Bible in the first place and didn't understand how, you know, this is a, a way to do really, really well. His net worth, $5 million dollars. $5 million, again, to the average person is quite a bit of money. How about Hal Lindsey? Now, he's been writing books saying that Jesus is coming back every year, uh, forever, forever. You know, he didn't think we were going to get to here. Uh, he's written so many books uh, about that. 94 years old. $4 million is net worth. Many, many books and television series. The late great planet Earth. Right. Four million dollars. And of course, these guys that that's probably low because he's probably shuffled so much money over into different companies, corporations, other family members, different investments that you get to hide it. They know the ins and the outs. Eight richest pastors in America. Kenneth Copeland, seven hundred and sixty million dollars. Wait a minute. Let's go. What? What? Again, I say unto you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Well, I mean, shouldn't his biggest objective be to enter the kingdom of God? Shouldn't he be giving away his cloak and his tunic too? How many cloaks and tunics can he buy for $760 million? Well, they have a lot of reasons to make sure that they kind of keep peddling the same belief system and the same agenda that's been given to them by some very controlling influences. So, I mean, it, it's that's always really kind of baffled me, you know, when, when a lot of these evangelists evangelicists evangelicals evangelicals they are so rich they have so much money they fly here they fly there they wear the absolute best of the best of the best clothes and they still send around a uh, a little tin for people to put more money in no matter how big the church is i mean they have money just being raked in and people can't seem to see past the influence <laughs> you know they can't see past like why would they continue to peddle this people are only stuck in that one belief system 
that helps these ones bring in all of this money. And I too went through the same thing in the Bible, trying to read it, trying to understand it, going to, to you know, women's Bible study, to different Bible studies, looking for answers, but always knowing in, in my heart that there is something wrong with this picture. You know, there is just something is not sitting right with this. Um, but I, I still, I, I did my best. And I got to tell you, I mean, the one useful thing of, of Bible study and the Bible is I may not have found the truth like I have found it now because I needed to go to the source material. That was the one thing that I was missing was the source material. And once I understood that, then I understood the bigger picture. And once you're seeing the bigger picture and you understand the control system the way it is, now you can see that it's so important for these uh, beings to keep saying what they're saying, to keep pushing the same narrative, because my gosh, they are really rewarded quite well. Oh, they are. This is the bigger picture, Pat Robertson. Oh, join the 700 Club. You could be part of our club. It's going to cost you money, and he's got a hundred million plus. Uh, Benny Hinn, 42 million, you know, goes on and on. Joel Oldstein, 40 million. It pays well. Creek Flow Dollar, 27 million. Billy Graham, 25 million. Small change nowadays, but again, a lot of this is, is, is again, uh, not showing everything because they understand the system. And you have Rick Warren, 25 million, Joyce Meyer, 8 million. The bottom line is <clears throat> it pays well. They, and this, this person that authored this on beliefnet.com uh, says there's nothing wrong with being wealthy, of course, but with great wealth comes re great responsibility. Regardless of your rung on the income ladder, we must remember that Jesus viewed wealth as a gift from God to be used in his service. Well, you know, again, too, when you look to this statement, it would seem that it would be an almost impossibility if you're hoarding wealth without doing something with it in a beneficial way for others, and you're just simply hoarding it, this statement would lead you to believe you don't have much of a chance to get into, you know, the Christian heaven, so to speak. And globally, we see... Uh, Adir Macedo, he's a Brazilian religious leader serving as an evangelical bishop. $1.2 billion. Alf Lucal, $1 billion. This is a pastor and founder of Alleluia Ministries in South Africa. And again, he has a YouTube uh, channel with 1.5 million followers on that platform. Absolutely. These are big, big bucks. These are just, I mean, this this is incredible wealth. You have another one here from Brazil. World Church of the Power of God. Yes, $350 million. This is huge. And it's interesting, too, to see, you know, in a, in a part of the world that has so much poverty, Africa, Here's another Nigerian preacher, $150 million, Living Faith Church. It pays well. It gives you tax-deferred investments. It, it's, it, it just, it, it's kind of like a shortcut in so many ways to climbing that uh, ladder because, again, you, you don't have to pay the tax man. You, you get exempted from it. This it is, it's, it's just an amazing system that's laid out right here. Here's another Nigerian televangelist, 126 million. What could these people do in Africa, which is so impoverished, with this type of money? But, you know, if they have that, that means that they're hoarding that energy. A Brazilian televangelist, $125 million. So again, you could see where that Matthew comment would, would lead to. But certainly, it has been profitable for these people. Another uh, one from Malawi in South Africa, $110 million. Isn't it fascinating to see so much money in Africa? There's another one, Nigeria, $50 million. So much money in one of the poorest, well, poorest continent on, on the planet. Isn't that fascinating, really, when you think about it? 
And now we're getting down into others again. There's another Nigerian pastor. So in Nigeria, you, you have so many people uh, that, that don't have anything, but you have a handful of pastors that have far more than many of the richest um, you know, zip codes, the average people in the richest zip codes in the world. And I would think that if they took this income and they spread it out, then there would be no hunger, there would be no poor, there would be no one uh, in a place of want, there would not be hungry children, <laughs> you know, there, there wouldn't be so many things, you know, but just like our mainstream news, I mean, this is mainstream religion, and it's w rewarded, it's rewarded greatly. And it just, I guess it just takes people a while to understand because the human spirit wants to be something, wants to be part of something bigger than itself. And this is the handy thing that the, that the control system hands out. It's like a pamphlet everybody gets once you get here in the 3D. Here, here's your pamphlet. Just believe this and everything will be fine. If you don't believe this, well, we're going to make sure, you know, a dozen people tackle you and <laughs> tell you how bad you are until you do believe this. Absolutely. So here we see the Mormon Church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, $200 billion. One whistleblower estimated that it will be worth a trillion dollars by 2044 if, if we get there in this current system. That's huge. But remember, who founded it? Joseph Smith. And what was Joseph Smith? He, he was a 33rd degree Mason. This is, this is, again, how the system works. And the system, uh, and again, Joseph Smith uh, was somebody that in this age might not have gone that route. Uh, he was, you know, a soul with a lot of potential that the system grabbed, latched onto, and pulled into the system. Next on that list is $35 billion um, for a temple in Hinduism. And we also see another Hindu temple at $22 billion. So it's not exclusively Christianity, but Christianity defi definitely dominates as far as the richest uh, organizations as far as religion goes. And how much is the Vatican worth? Nobody really knows. I mean, the Vatican is literally, it's the smallest country in the world. It's a country. It's its own country. And, you know, again, it has its own little army there either. And and we don't know, but it is obviously the, the richest single religious entity, but we really don't have a clue of, of how much that is. It's just insane how much it is. Store up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart also will be. Where your treasure is, there your heart also will be. So, you know, that shows us that all these preachers that we're talking about, well, you know, where's their treasure? It's, it's obviously the almighty dollar or whatever denomination they're using in whatever country that they are in. And, you know, that's the bottom line. It has served them well, just like Pope Leo. It has served us well, this myth of Christ. We are wealthy men and it has worked very well and this guy is so cute because he's just bound and determined to tear out this snowman's arm he's not going to give up until he gets that arm <laughs> cute little guy but you know in short i i don't believe that there's anything wrong with being uh, well taken care of in this 3d world but if you have this much that we just went over and there's so many that are starving and hungry around you and you're sleeping really well in a nice air-conditioned palace with gold-plated um, silverware and furniture, well, you know, maybe maybe that's just uh, energetically not quite balanced. Absolutely. And again, we do believe that Yeshua was very real, and he was uh, all about exposing the system, but the system took Yeshua gave us uh, the manufactured form of, of Jesus and switched the message from an anti-establishment message, an anti-system message, to one the system could use. 
Well, you know, really quick, we were just talking about that yesterday, you know, as far as why, why does there need to be this single savior? You know, why does the system need for this one person to be the only way? And really, I mean, just looking at it, it's, it's easier to control. I mean, you all, you have one point of control. If you can get people to just buy into this one little fact, and if they don't, Dozens of people around them are going to tell them that they're sinners and they're horrible and they're less than and they're not good. It just makes it easy for the control grid. Absolutely. <clears throat> and, you know, as uh, the famous saying of P.T. Barnum, uh, who, if you're not familiar, was a big, uh, you familiar with P.T. Barnum? I've heard of him. Barnum and Bailey Circus. Oh, yeah, 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 he was a big, big showman. And, and in reality, there's a... Uh, uh, Barnum Museum, you know, Tom Thumb, all that. He, you know, one of his sayings was that there was a sucker born every moment. And others have said this as well, like W.C. Fields, if you're going back different generations. And people have literally bought the Brooklyn Bridge thinking that they were buying the Bro Brooklyn Bridge. You know, humanity is always looking, uh, always looking for guidance. And unfortunately, often in all the wrong places. It is. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.